What are the conditions required for a good stance? <clears throat> there are three. The first condition is that the shooter must be stable and well balanced. The second condition is the shooter must be relaxed. And the third condition is that he should repeat the stable and well balanced relaxed stance from shot to shot for each and every shot. Now we come to the position. There are basically two extreme positions and there is a third which is an in-between position. Let me demonstrate. Let us assume that the target is here. Now the first position is, if the target is here, this is called the inline position. The neck is twisted, the eyes are pointing towards the target, the feet are 90 degrees from the target. Target line, 90 degrees, the feet position. In the second position, if this is the target, the head is pointing straight to the target, the neck is not twisted, the feet are pointing towards the target. This is the position. And then there is a third position which is anywhere between facing the target and inland position which means I can take an angle to the target. I make an angle this way, this way and I make this angle by changing the position of the feet like this like this, like this, like this. Now why do we have the in-between position? This is because in the inline position, where the target is here, there is a lot of strain on the neck because you twist your head this way, lift your pistol. There is a continuous strain on your neck. To avoid the strain, what a shooter does is he changes his position, makes an angle. Now, in this position, his head is pointed straight to the target. There is no strain on the neck. There is no strain on the neck. There is a third advantage in having an angled position. When you are standing face to face to the target, there is a tendency for the body to go backward and forward. Here is the target. There is a tendency for the body to go backwards, forward and backwards. Forward and backward. The same thing happens in this position also. This is the target. When I lift the pistol up, there is a tendency for the body to swing forward or backward. But in this position, the body is much more stable. However, I leave it to you. I leave it to you. It is your choice. Try out the different stance. Whether your feet are pointing towards the target or the feet are pointing 90 degrees to the target or it is an angle to the target. I want you to try out each and every position and then select one. Now we will talk about the feet position and the distance between the feet. Now whichever stance you take, inline or angled or pointing to the target, the distance of your feet should be equal to the width of your shoulders. This gives very good balance. Anything less is unstable. Anything too much is not required. This is what is required. The width of your feet is equal to the width of your shoulders. The next point is your knees. Your knees should be locked. Don't press backwards. Don't press backwards. Just keep them locked, relaxed. Don't bend, nor do you push backwards. Pushing backwards creates a strain. Bending is unstable. Just be relaxed, tight. Be comfortable. 
but lock the knees. They should not move. Don't twist your body. Don't twist your body. This creates strain on your side muscles and on your knees. And any kind of strain is going to hamper your shooting. If you want to twist your body, why don't you just take an angle? So there is no twist. There is no twist in the angle or the plane of the body. So avoid twisting. The other thing is the position of the head. The head should be straight in line with the target. Assuming the target is here, in line with the target. It should not be tilting this way or backwards, forward. Neither should you be peering at the target in this manner or peering at the target in this manner. Eyes should be horizontal in line with the target and the head should be straight. Now we come to the shooting arm. Basically there are three pivots of movement in the shooting arm which need to be kept under control. The first pivot is from the shoulder, this shoulder. The second pivot is the elbow and the third pivot is the wrist. I'll show it. Once again, the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist. Now during shooting, you must lock your shoulder, your elbow and your wrist once the sights come into the aiming area. So, if this is the position, you lock your arm here, you lock your elbow and you lock your wrist and this is how you go. Straight up, shoot and come down. Only the shoulder movement takes place. Lock the elbow, lock the wrist. Shoot, come down. Exactly like a railway signal. Now we come to the position or the non shooting arm. The non shooting arm must be anchored. You can anchor it like this, you can put it in your pocket, or you can hook it to your belt. The important thing is that when you are lifting the pistol, when you are lifting the pistol, this movement of the arm should not be there. This should be neutral. It should not take part in any activity when the pistol is being raised and lowered. 